may be over your money. That's right. To mess with your money, he can't just come in and just do stuff. He right. need he need he need a human yeah. body, a human people. Yes, he does. To operate, God operates like that. God yeah. operates through us. Yeah. So Satan operates through people that are yield to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter sixteen, verses seventeen and eighteen. If you have it, say I have it. I have it. it says, "This is Paul." He says, "Now I urge you, brethren, note, take notice of those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learn." He says, avoid them. Well, what is the doctrine that we learn? The Word of God, right? So when people come in and they start teaching contrary to the Word of God and it's, and, and it's causing division, he says, you got to stay away from them. Verse 18. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, or maybe your Bible may say their own appetite. And by smooth words and flattering speech, Deceive the hearts of the simple. Mm -hmm. By smooth words, you got people out there real educated. You got people trained to deceive you. Mm -hmm. You got people that that are trained to teach you a lie. And they and because they're trained to do it, they're good at it. Mm -hmm. Do you know professional con men get together, a lot of them, not all of them, but they they, it, we can call it a school, but it's not really a school because it's not a school for them. But they go and they learn and 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 and, and, and study how to deceive you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And 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 what they do, they know how to say the right thing. They know how to say. See, the key word here is flattering words. Right. They flatter you. When, you know, have you ever noticed something about people? When they want something from you, they flatter you. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. The same people that don't even Sorry. speak to you hard. Yeah. People that hardly say nothing to you. Come on, when they man. want something from you, they start flat. Oh, man, you look sharp. Mm -hmm. Boy, you know what? I, 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 I think, man, I love you. Some people don't even speak to them. I love you teaching, man. I love this and I love that. And, I'm, and I automatically, my mind, okay, they want something. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the punchline. The punchline, the punchline is... Can you do this for me? Yeah. Uh, can I get this from you? Yeah. Uh, are you able to do that for me? That's the punchline. Right. And see, those are flattering words. People with flattering words, they're very, they're, they, they, they're very smooth. You know what I mean? They, 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 they sound good. Yeah. They make you feel good. But you have to be mindful. All right? Are y'all all right with that? Yeah. Paul encouraged us here to be mindful of those who would come into our life and try to cause division <coughs> through their smooth words. Mm -hmm. Paul said that these smooth talkers are not seeking our best interest, but are only interested in satisfying their own appetites. In Romans chapter 16, verse 17, 18 from the Am Amplified Bible, it reads, I appeal to you, brethren, to be on your guard concerning those who create dissensions and difficulties and cause divisions in opposition to the doctrine, the teaching which you have been taught. I warn you to turn aside from them to avoid them. Verse 18, it says, For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites and base desires. And by ingratiating, ingratiating which means to establish oneself in the favor of uh, it's to establish oneself in the favor or good graces of others by deliberate effort. Meaning that they're going to go out of their way, they're going to put forth an effort to try to make themselves uh, to, to, to come into your favor. Okay, they want to, you know, they want to be part of you, your, your, your situation. Uh, they want to manipulate you so they have to come into your good graces. So they put forth an effort to do that. And a lot of times it's with flattering words. They'll flatter you about how nice you look and, and how good things are going. You know, they're just talking good to you to, 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 to win you over. Right. All right? That's what he's talking about here. All right? He says, uh, and uh, by deliberate effort and flattering speech, they beguile the hearts of the unsuspecting, simple-minded people. You have to... You have, Paul is telling us here, you have to be on guard. You have to be on guard for, for, for people that get behind the pulpit, 
for people that's one-on-one -on -one ministering to you, you have to be on guard because you got a lot of smooth talkers out there oh, yeah. that'll tell you something that's contrary to the Word of God. And what happens is you can tell when, when it's not the Word of God because God's Word is something that you can always look for. God's Word will always motivate you to love. Yeah. Okay. God's word will always motivate you to love others. When you find yourself with teachings and in being influenced to, to, to be angry with someone or to separate yourself from someone or to hold unforgiveness, that's not God. You better you better now you better start watching the person that's teaching you. You need to investigate and make sure from the word of God, get into the word. Do 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 like the Bereans. They got into the word and they searched scripture. Mm -hmm. and made sure that what Paul was teaching was right. And we have to do that ourselves. We have to check behind everybody. I tell people all the time, check behind me. That's why, like, I love Pastor Chuck for this, and really do it too. Use a lot of scripture. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because when you're using a lot of scripture, it ain't you teaching. You, right. You're teaching God's word. That's right. Okay, and then people can go back and check that from That's God's right. word. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in, in a person's opinion. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because opinions are just like noses. Everybody got one, and, mo and, and most of them got holes in them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can find some holes in the opinion. All right. So I'm not interested in, the, in a person's opinion. I'm interested in the Word of God because the Word of God has no holes in it. People have tried to come against it, tried to make it not be true, but the Word of God has stood the test. And, and to this day, the Bible is one of the most popular selling yes it is, it is. Yeah. It, it, only it's only book. only the Bible only God could have predicted the things that are happening years ago he predicted yeah. that are happening now we can't only say God. man do that because man can't even predict the weather you take the rain out there, you take the raincoat of your umbrella, and the sun might burn you up. <laughs> he, can't even predict, he can't even predict the weather. But God has predicted, and we see, and, 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 and we see these things coming to pass. He has predicted what would happen. So the Bible is true. And this is what we use to uh, judge the teachings of others. All right? Mm -hmm. It is important that we understand that when we read books or listen to sermons, we need to check the content of what is written or said so that we won't be fooled by the smooth talk and glowing words and by external appearances. I'm gonna tell you what makes a I'm gonna tell you what makes a, 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 a DVD, a book, a CD. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what makes those things valuable. It ain't the cost. A DVD can cost hundred dollars, but that don't mean that it's valuable. Right. The right. content right. is what's valuable. That's right. Right. It could cost a dollar, but if, if it's the word of God in that content, it's that's right. what's valuable. It's priceless. Mm -hmm. It's priceless. Yes. Yes. It's not the, the the cost of something. It's the content. That's right. The meaning of it. Yes. That's what Paul was teaching him in, in Corinthians. I think it's around chapter nine when he was talking about. It. He said, "I hope I didn't make a mistake by not." Charging you guys. What he was saying was because he had them those those false apostles that they was charging people yes, and, they and, and they was paying for what they said, but Paul was saying what we're saying is more valuable. Yes. That's like I use our church for example. We don't sell DVDs. We don't we don't we, you know we ask for a donation and if you don't have it then we don't care. We don't sell nothing. But a lot of times people won't get them. But if somebody comes and they got a book or something and they put $20 on it, believe it or not, a lot of people say, well, that must be valuable. $20 for this little thin book, it must be valuable. Well, no, not necessarily. It's the content that makes it valuable. You got to understand that the, the information that you're going to get from that, that's what's valuable. All right? So don't ever think because something is free that it's not valuable. You have to check out the content. Right. Because it's the content, it's the knowledge that's going to change you and rearrange you. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, y'all all right with that? Amen. It helps us to ask ourselves questions or maybe others. For example, we can ask questions like, does the teaching that they're doing come from Scripture? Mm -hmm. And then you can, you know, you can ask around or you can check it out yourself. And then another good thing, this is important, those that are teaching is the teacher's lifestyle consistent with biblical morality? Are they living 
like the Bible tells them to live. You know, in Timothy, that's what he talks about. Yeah. For in First Timothy chapter three, he's talking about those that want to be a teacher, preacher. They got to live a certain way. Mm -hmm. Because see, the best example is to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can tell somebody something, but I remember y'all. Do, do y'all remember Brother Ed? Brother Ed said that you should be with Brother Dick. He said I would rather see a sermon That's right. than yeah. hear a sermon. That's right. So the way you live is more of a example to people than what you say. But we can say anything out of our mouth. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So the devil is a deceiver, and the only weapon that he has is deception. But he's good at it, and he has people out there that he's using to to help uh, propagate his deception. Are y'all okay with that? Amen. Praise Jesus. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for revealing to us all the, all the deception of the devil. As long as we have your word, we know that we have the faith. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, once again for the services this morning. Thank you for the praise that we're going to lift up to you. Thank you for receiving it. Thank you, thank you for the worship, for receiving it. For yes, we love you so much, you, Father. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you love us enough yes. to cause your son to be punished in our place. And we thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for your, your, your sacrifice. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your power. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.